Hey everyone, and welcome to another permit video. Today we're going to do a comparison because we're going to compare two policy models, RBAC to ABAC. Now we're not just going to talk about their differences, but we're also going to see how we can model RBAC and then expand it to ABAC in the permit policy editor. Now, first of all, let's go and do a quick recap. What is RBAC? Well, RBAC stands for Role-Based Access Control. And essentially, it's just the simplest policy model that you can have within your application to enforce permissions. What does that mean? Well, let me give you an example of an RBAC policy. An administrator can delete document. That's how simple it is. Essentially, you're given a role upon login, and then therefore, can you interact with a specific document? In this case, delete it. Now, what does ABAC stand for? Well, ABAC stands for Attribute-Based Access Control. And essentially, how does ABAC compare? What are the differences? Well, as I told you, RBAC, or Oral Based Access Control, is a simple model where we can say an administrator deletes a document. With ABAC, we're able to make that permission far more granular, which means we can add attributes to define specific conditions that we want to meet. So rather than just saying an administrator can delete a document, we can say an administrator who's located in continental US and uh, who works in the engineering department can only delete a document between 9 and 5 p.m. And therefore that permission model now gets far more granular and then therefore you can really narrow down and control your permissions in a much more enforced manner. But how do we actually go about building those permissions? Well, I want to dive into a real life example with Permit, which is a no-code solution for managing your full stack authorization. And inside of there, they have a no-code policy editor where we can actually go ahead and model all of this. Now, what are we going to model though? Well, I want to create some roles. The roles will be a customer, a bank cashier, and a bank manager. But then again, if we create those roles, how do we check for the permissions inside our application code? Inside your application level code, permit provides with a permit.check function, which takes three parameters. It takes the unique user identity that you get from the JSON web token, uh, upon creating a new session, so upon logging into your application, you pass in the action, so this is the delete, and the resource that we defined, which is the document that we're working with, and therefore we're able to check for permissions. Now, when I'm talking about actions and resources, this is another thing that we define inside of permit on top of the roles in order to be able to work with a policy. So in this case, we have some resources that we want to define. We'll define accounts, we'll define transactions, we'll define loans, we'll define reports, and then we'll define the actions for them. So we'll be able to view and transfer accounts. We'll be able to pay and process transactions. We'll be able to approve loans and view reports. So now let's actually jump into permit and model this and see how it works. It's very simple. All right, so we are inside of the permit app. If you want to register yourself an account, go to app.permit.io, register your organization, and you're going to be good to go. Here, I'm going to navigate to the policy editor, and this is where we're going to create our policies. Currently, we don't have one because in order to create the policies, we need to create the roles, and then we need to create the resources with the corresponding actions that we want to perform on that resource. So let's start with the roles. I'm going to navigate to the roles tab, and I'm going to click create role. Now, in this case, the first role that we have is called a cashier. So I'm typing in the name, it generates the key. You can add a description here if you wish, and we can save that. Now let's go ahead and create the two other roles. Now, once we define our roles, let's create our resources. Now, some of the resources that we have, the first one is called accounts, and we have some actions that we want to add or perform on this resource. Now, in this case, Permit populates us with four generic actions that we can use, but even just backspace those actions and write our own. So in this case, for accounts, we're gonna be view, and we're going to have the transfer action, and we can save. And we can do that for all the remaining resources. All right, so now I finished creating all the resources. And as you can see, as we expand these, you see all the actions that we have assigned to them right here. Now, once we've defined our roles and once we define the resources with their corresponding actions, we can now go into the policy editor and you'll see that all these roles that we created have generated, all the resources have generated per each role and the actions that the role may perform. Now, once we want to create that policy, it's just as simple as checking the boxes for the specific roles that we have. So maybe in this case, the cashier can view the accounts or in this case, 
maybe uh, transfer and view the accounts and maybe approve the loans. The store manager can only approve the loans and pay the transactions. And the supervisor in this case, well, as a supervisor, they can probably do everything. And we save those changes and that policy gets generated and is available for us to use and enforce in our application. Now, what I've just shown you is a very simple RBAC example. So what happens when we want to expand the functionality and we want to make things a little bit more granular? Well, with every single role and with every single resource, we can expand and add extra conditions. So in the same way, I've mentioned that maybe we have a cashier. Maybe we can have a cashier that is located in the uh, toy department, or maybe we can have a cashier that's working at a Walmart store in Tennessee, for example, right? And then for And then for the resources, maybe we can have loans and maybe we can have loans that can only be made after 10 p.m. Uh, Maybe we can have reports that can only be generated on the weekends, things like that. Now, how are these defined within Permit? Now, within Permit, we have two concepts. We have a concept of a user set and a resource set. Now, a user set is essentially a role with extra conditions on top and a resource set is a resource with extra conditions on top. Now, in order to start working with ABAC, you need to define the attributes. Well, in the directory, under the settings tab, you have user attributes, tenant attributes, and role attributes. Now, in this case, we're going to work with user attributes because we're just going to generate a very simple example of a user set. So the extra conditions applied on top of a role. And in this case, we already have some pre-populated attributes, which are roles, emails, and key. Now, you know that I've told you about a location of a cashier, maybe a department, maybe a cashier inside of a specific store. So let's create an attribute called store. And we'll have the type of a string. And as you can see, you can have different types of the attribute. In this case, we're going to be working with a string. And I'm going to add this attribute. Now I'm going to go back into my policy and I'm going to create a user set. And in this case, I'm going to uh, call this a Walmart cashier. And I'm going to create that condition. Now creating conditions basically work like logic gates in computer science. And they're just very simple. You have AND gates, OR gates, and this is kind of how it works. In this case, I'm going to compare to the store attribute and I'm going to type in Walmart because that's the kind of cashiers we're looking for. So only cashiers within Walmart will be able to do something. So I'm going to save this user set. And as you'll see, the user role, but it has those extra conditions. So now in this case, maybe a cashier just a generic cashier, well, he cannot view the reports, but maybe only a Walmart cashier can view the reports. So someone based in Walmart, that's a cashier, will be able to view the reports for maybe that specific location. And we can save those changes. And therefore, with the same policy editor, without performing too many changes, we automatically get a more granular permission bottle that we can build on top of the simple RBAC model that we currently have. So as you're working with permit and as you're building permissions, you're never really restricted with how you create your policies. And therefore, you can use this to really expand and make your permission management and the restrictions you put inside your app uh, much, much more refined. Now, that's all for this video. Make sure you subscribe and check out the other videos that we have on RBAC, ABAC, RBAC, policy management and everything related to authorization. I'll see you in the next video.